the main presentation is they come in with, with headaches and perhaps a little bit of blurry vision or double vision coming in through ED. And then when the doctors do their blood tests, they, they see all the other markers, the inflammatory markers and the VSRs a bit raised and that's where we end up seeing them. You've all done carotid dopplers, so um, you know where the superficial temporal artery is. It's where you, you tap when you're doing the temporal tap. And as I said before, the superficial temporal artery is not really a branch of the ECA. It's one of the terminal ends of the, of the ECA, if, if that makes sense. So I use the colour quite a lot to help me find where the vessel is and to see where the wall is as well which um, may or may not be completely kosher um, for some people. But just by having the colour set appropriately, I, I can see where the wall is just here. And you can already see that we're not seeing this big hypoalkalic halo around the vessel. This is 0.3 of a mil, so I'm normal. Now that I can see it, I'll follow it up a little bit and you can see this is the artery just here and you can see I'm holding the probe quite low and I'm also using my little finger to balance on him as well. This is a procedure that if it's a bit hard to find the vessels really um, is a bit tough on your shoulder so try and keep your arm as close as possible to your side. Um, and you can see the vessel just there, the main superficial temporal artery, zoom him up a little bit. I've got my dynamic, dynamic range down pretty low, down around 45 or so, um, just to give me a little bit more contrast. Here's the artery, artery just here. And just with using the colour to help you measure the wall, I think you all agree if you, you can see that's absolutely normal, but you've got to give people a measurement at the end of the day, and it would be quite hard really to, to see exactly where the wall is. It's probably, probably just from there to there in reality, but um, just by throwing the colour on it just gives you a little bit better appreciation. And then also by using the colour and following it up will help you hopefully to see where the anterior and posterior branches go. I'm still following the human assistant main superficial temporal artery.
here's what I was talking about before. See, um, just here is the vein. It um, can be a little bit difficult to delineate from the artery there. If you just give it a little bit of a squash, you can see the, the vein squashes. Posterior branch, just there. As we're getting up higher, this is the anterior branch winding its way along. And as I was saying, if at any stage you want to measure the wall here, you just make sure your settings are nice and you're not using too much brain pressure. Sort of follow that up as far as we can. Just use a minimal probe pressure. Actually, up, up a fair way, that's probably about as far as I'll go. And uh, so you can see that little posterior branch. Even just at this early stage, I'd be I'd be pretty confident that it doesn't have temporal arteritis just from what I'm seeing here. I might just show you the main branch, just the way you So, just using a little bit of heel toe. of end diastole there and that's a nice normal looking signal. As far as velocities go, I, I'm not really sure what sort of velocities you should be looking at, but obviously if you were to get a little high resistance signal that was only going at about five centimeters a second, that would tell you that the flow is fairly constricted uh, through the vessels. Once again, there are lots of end diastole, so that's good. That's where it first emerges up from deep down, just, just there. You can see it's coming up from underneath. Tiny little scribbly posterior branch there. Just there. That also doesn't look thick walled. But even that looks like a nice nice waveform as well. And so we've got end diastole going all the way through, so that's our posterior branch. You can see the wall there, it's quite normal, and you can also by following it as far as you can in transverse, you can see whether there's any any areas of thickening in that. So of course power Doppler is very helpful, um, particularly if it's directional. We want to steer the box to get a good colour filling in that lumen. You can see when we flick to colour Doppler, there is some aliasing here. And that's because the colour scale or the PRF is being overlapped by the speed of the blood. If we were to up that PRF to 9 instead of 4, you can see the aliasing has disappeared. So that's ideal. We don't want to give the impression of a narrowed lumen or stenosis when in fact there isn't one. So it's important to optimize the scale. Make sure the filter in your spectral Doppler is not filtering out your end diastolic flow. You can see a nice normal trace there.